you go and you research the part where he says, in that day when my people of Israel dwelleth safely, it did not say my people. <laughs> that was something they added. It did not say my people. Even in the part further down, when it says, come up against my people Israel as a cloud in that passage, verse 16, it did not say my people. Okay? I'm going to show you what it said. If you look it up. Shalom, shalom to the remnant, to the called and the elect, and those that remain faithful to the end. This is Sibaya. I got a quick um, revelation. I got a quick uh, busted, this bald head, once again in the line. And uh, please excuse me, I'm not going to be too many words because as you can hear that my voice is a little bit gone. The weather is changing from cold to hot. And so I'm going through some, uh, <clears throat> you know, just a little cold. So once again, what... I want to I want to let y'all know, Israel. <clears throat> I said again from three years ago to now, y'all can go back and fact check me that y'all sent me to warn the people for what's coming, and that y'all has given the remnant, the called and the elect, enough time to hear the message, to hear the call, return, choose, purify their temples, be anointed by the Holy Spirit, sealed, and make it into the wilderness. Because Yah has given a command for us to come out of Babylon. And the in all the nations that Babylon um, has fornicated with. <clears throat> that being said, the board watchmen, as, as well as <clears throat> many other ministries, have make it, made it a attempt, a direct attempt to make to overturn the prophecies that I have revealed uh, with detail to get you to understand what was coming. Yeah, with Putin right now and all that's going on, everybody named Mama becomes super duper prophets now. Now they think they understand something. But their mission is the same and it's self inspired, self willed, and it's based on money, it's based upon their own dreams, it's based upon their own aspirations. And I go in into Yah's word to prove that Yah is against all of these shepherds that are misleading to people based upon their own visions and dreams and aspirations that did not sit in Yah's counsel and ask of him. Yah said in the last days, there will be those that join us to help us that have wisdom with smooth and flattering words, and that is get a piece of land. And this is the message that I have proved that these shepherds, false shepherds are using for their own protection, their own finances, their own wealth at the end of the day. And that they're going to mislead you for the prophecy. So this bald head, lying deceiver, salesman, is once again deceiving the word. Now, I find it interesting because uh, anyone that knows me knows that I pre-record my messages. I do not go live. So basically, by the time you see a message that I'm putting up on YouTube, it is usually a week, two weeks, even three sometimes pre-recorded. I think I have a spy. I think I might have an informant in my uh, ministry. I don't know. Um, however, I do know that Deborah Watchmen and Yahoo Watchmen have gone through my prophecies and picked them apart, taken knowledge where they wanted to take it. They are thieves. They are those that Jeremiah prophesizes that I'm against these prophets every man that steal my words from their neighbors. They're lying prophets because they're stealing lying prophecies. <clears throat> he goes in and he's trying to prove that the battle of Ezekiel 37 and 38 is not against us as a people. Why? Because he wants to propagate that we are not within the borders where Yah has determined we should be. He wants to propagate that we are still in the land of our captivity, and we don't return until the very final last war of God give me God. Well, I'm not going to go into all those distinct details, but I want to prove it. It's just he's a known, purposed liar. He knows what he's doing. And you guys are not going to go back and fact check him and see if he's a lot. Now, so I'm not going to put the words in his, his mouth. I'm going to let him speak his own words. And I'm going to show you how deceitful 
to board watchmen and watchmen report off. And anybody else that don't want to believe me, they can go back and I'll post it up in the link behind underneath here of all the other videos that I showed them lying on prophecy. All right. So I just did a lesson called I will shake the heavens and the earth. I will post that up because it's actually going to go into deeper explanation, line upon line upon line, verse by verse by verse. And there's any word that needs to be distinctly pulled out in the Hebrew, I go into it and show you where these other prophecies line up. So let's get, let's play. Let's see the lie that he's spinning so that y'all don't think that y'all have to come out of Babylon because y'all said he's going to destroy her. Is to make war for the armies of the East. Okay. Now. Make way for the armies of the east. This is what it's talking about here. All these armies that's gonna come together, right? Now, here's where the interpretation gets a little shaky. Now watch this. It says, be thou prepared and prepare thyself thou and thy company that are assembled with thee and be thou on guard unto them. Okay, it's talking to God and it's telling God, you're gonna be on guard unto them. In other words, you're gonna be like their captain, like their leader unto all of these other nations and, and, um, and the countries, nations and armies basically, right? Now, let's go to verse eight and watch this. After many days thou shalt be visited. In the latter years thou shalt come into a land, to the land which is brought back from the sword, and is gathered out from many of uh, many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, and is brought forth out of the nation, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. And thou shalt ascend and come like a storm, and thou shalt be like a cloud over cover the land, thou and thy bands, and many people with thee. Okay? So when you see this, you say, wait a minute. It says that they shall dwell safe, safely, all of them. So you get the picture that, oh man, they're dwelling safely in the land. Wait a minute, that must be talking about us in the millennial. No, it's not. That ain't who it's referring to. It's not referring to us at all. It's talking about the people in those areas. Because uh, actually, the way that interpretation should have been written, should have been written a little different. It should sound a little more like this here. Watch this. It should have been like this. Um, verse 7. It should have been more like, be prepared, be prepared. You and all your soldiers assemble around you. You will be their leader. Talking about God. After a long time, you will be called to service. In other words, y'all saying, I'm going to use you, Gog and Magog. I'm going to use you. I'm going to call you to service, right? In the years to come, you will attack a land that has been rebuilt after a war. See, that's what it's talking about in rebuilt after war. Now watch this. We know that when the people of Israel went over and took the land, remember the great day, what was it, 1945? Was it, was it 47 or 48? But you remember the pictures when they all celebrated that Israel got, um, became a nation and all those people were over there and all that. Okay, that's what it's talking about. They went over there, what did they do? They rebuilt everything. Since then, they have rebuilt so much in Israel over in those areas, right? Because they got all this money. Okay, so watch this, right? So then it goes on and says, it's... Okay, that's the first lie. <clears throat> and he's going to go to try to confirm this lie. And he found some crazy interpretation. If he didn't rewrite it himself, I don't know uh, where he got that. But um, no, as I go into very distinctly to, to show you that we are the people that are returned from the sword that have been scattered into many nations, always desolate. It's clearly talking about Yah's people because it says that in the next verses. So let's see this continuous lie that he wants to push. People have been gathered from many nations and brought to the mountains of Israel. So these people that's there, they came from where? Many nations and came over there, right? And, and, and have been, mountains have been ruined for a long time. These people were brought there from nations. All of them lived there safely. So in other words, at the time that this war gonna happen, they gonna be living there safely. And that's what's going on, right? All these people are living over there safely until what? Remember what it says in scripture? When, peace, when they say peace and safety, then comes sudden destruction. Remember what it says, let them to be in Judea, flee to the mountains. This is what it's talking about. They living peacefully over there. So then I would ask you if this is the proper land of Israel now. He's talking, Yah is dedicating these scriptures to a war of Russia and Israel. Russia against Israel. These people dwelling safely without walls, without bars and walls. Could that be far from the truth? Israel has been in, in constant war. <clears throat> they do not live in unwalled villages, they do not live without bars. And gates without a protection system. But he's going to change the tide by bringing Gog and Magog against the land, right? Now, let's keep on reading here from the King James. Now, we're going to go down a little further, okay? We're going to go to verse, uh, let's see, uh, verse 10. And it says, 
Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim. It shall come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages, and I will go up to them that are at rest, and, I, and dwell safely. All them that dwelling without walls, and having neither bars nor gates, and take a spoil, and take a prey, and turn thy hand upon the desert places that are now inhabited. So, so he said, yeah, when these nations come, come to destroy Israel, they're going to think to themselves, oh, we can do we can do wickedly here. We can do some stuff, right? Moses said, no, 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 I'm about to tear everything up. Not just this area here is going to be, I'm going to destroy a lot of people using you, but you all are going to get destroyed too. Okay, so that's basically y'all is kind of like um, setting a trap. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? He's like he's setting a trap. Now, here's where it gets kind of confusing. And people, when they read this passage, they say, wait a minute. I, I don't understand. I'm going to show you what's going on. Okay, now watch this. Verse 14, it says, Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto God, Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, In that day when my people Israel dwelleth safely, shall thou not know it? And thou shalt come from thy place out from the north parts, and thou and many people with thee, all riding upon horses, a great company, and a mighty army, and thou shalt come against the land, thou, I'm sorry, thou shalt come against my people Israel as a cloud of cover, the land, it shall be in the latter days, and I will bring thee against my land, okay, that the heathen may know me when I have sanctified, when I be sanctified in thee, okay. Oh, um, that's clear as day. I don't know how to 27,000 of y'all allow this man to lie right in front of your faces and tell you that was something clearly say it don't mean. Watch the lie that he tells you right in front of your face when he just read it. All right. <clears throat> oh, God, before their eyes. So right away you say, wait a minute. The people of Israel, he said that in a day when my people Israel dwell safely, and you say, well, that proves that the people over there in Israel today are God's people dwelling safely, or this passage has to refer to when? The How about he don't understand prophecy at all, and he wants to remove the three and a half years in the wilderness that is in the land of the borders? Millennial, when we're there dwelling safely, right? And then God and Megah comes in a millennial. I'm going to show you how you can tell the difference, right? How you can see what time frame this is talking about. It's definitely talking about the battle of Armageddon time frame, not a thousand years later with the battle of, of Gog and Magog. Watch this, I'll prove it to you. If you go and you research the part where he says, in that day when my people of Israel dwell safely, it did not say my people. <laughs> that was something they added. It did not say my people. Even in the part further down, when it says, come up against my people Israel as a cloud in that passage, verse 16, it did not say my people. Okay? I'm going to show you what it said. Look it up. It actually said, this nigga, this boy headed salesman, gonna say it didn't say that. I'm gonna show you what it said. All right, I do know these translations that could be wrong. Let's see. When it says, but my people, the word there is actually am, okay, which means a people, <laughs> a nation of people that's dwelling safely in our land, not my people. It is All right. I know. First of all, how you gonna convince people this is the last battle of Armageddon before the kingdom, and this ain't against his people? That don't make no sense. That don't make no sense at all. However, he goes. One of the things that I keep telling people: first of all, they don't know Hebrew. They don't read Hebrew, and he's learned to become slick. And watch my videos and see how I disprove words, disprove interpretations by going into the proper Hebrew. And people got slick by doing that. And they know 20 times out of 10, y'all not going to go and fact check anybody. <clears throat> y'all just going to believe it. Only one or two people will do that. He's going to presume to tell you that when it says my people Israel, that he don't mean that. But he couldn't say it. that's not what it said yet. He couldn't just know the fact that it says, my people Israel, that dwell safely in the land. Where? In the wilderness for three and a half years, which is in the land. He going to say that it doesn't say my people in verse of chapter Ezekiel 38, 14, 16, and 17. That it just says 
a people. So when you go into the Hebrew, let me, uh, hold on. All right, before I go into the Strong's to show you that he's blatantly lying on it, he knows he's lying because he's a wonderful salesman and that's what they do. I'm going to let it finish. I want to let it finish playing. I want you to hear his, everything he got to say. And I'm going to stop at times 1830. So they threw that my in there so we get a sense that he must be talking about the people of Israel. No, he's talking about people that's dwelling safely in our land, in the land of Israel. In both cases, there's the same word was changed in both cases. Okay. So now let's keep reading. So he's not talking about his people. He's talking about people that those nations in the earlier part that I read to you, those nations that all these people came and gathered into those areas and they lived there safely. He's talking about those people. Now let's keep reading. Okay. Because you're going to get what time frame he's talking about. And thou shalt come against the people that's in Israel is what it should have said. The people that's in Israel is what it should have said. The people that's in Israel is what it should have said. As a cloud of to cover the land. And it shall be in the latter days that I will bring thee against my land. See, he's talking about his land and the people that's in his land that the heathen that's in his land may know. <laughs> may know that I am Yahuwah that's bringing this thing upon you. Now, let's keep going down. Let's go down to verse 17. It says, thus saith Yahuwah. Okay, we're going to stop right there. Because once I prove that he's lying, then everything else falls out. Now, once again, I'm in total agreement that the war in Revelation uh, 20 about Gog and Magog after a thousand years is not this. That is somebody tampering with it so they don't understand the war of Gog and Magog and when it takes place, which everybody's struggling to understand when is this war. Because the Bible, the Bible prophesizes two wars. Two wars that Gog and Magog are in. in the, they are both in the end times. The first war is when he comes up against Babylon. And the second war is when he comes up against Israel. Once he's reigning in power for three and a half years, we're in the wilderness dwelling in safely. We have been hidden from the beast. Russia and China are the beast. They are the dragon. They are the new world order. Mm. We have been dwelling three and a half years for safety and safety and peace hidden from everybody. And they discover us in the end. And I go through the prophecies line by line. Prophecies by prophecy, to lay this all out. I will put it in my description box in the come out of her, my people. He presumes to say a whole lot of things that he extracted from my prophecies. But once again, he's a liar. All right. I want to play that one more time to make sure y'all hear it. And then I'm, we're going to go fact check this. And I believe he starts lying while well, he's lying through the whole thing. Right, now you can see what time frame this is talking about. It's definitely talking about the Battle of Armageddon time frame, not a thousand years later with the Battle of, of God and Magi. Watch this, I prove to you. If you go and you research the part where he says, In that day when my people of Israel dwell safely, it did not say my people. <laughs> that was something they added. It did not say my people. Even in the part further down, when it says, Come up against my people Israel as a cloud in that passage, verse 16, it did not say my people. Okay, I'm going to show you what it said. If you look it up, it actually said, when it says, when my people, the word there is actually am, okay? Which means a people, <laughs> a nation of people that's dwelling safely in our land, not my people. Isn't that amazing? So they threw that my in there so we get a sense that he must be talking about the people of Israel. No, he's talking about people that's dwelling safely in our land, in the land of Israel. In both cases, there's the same word was changed in both cases, okay? So now let's keep reading. So he's not talking about his people. He's talking about people that those nations in the earlier part. All right, let's go do the research like he said. Be right back. All right, we back. We're going to, if you do your research, we're going to find out, right? All right, this is Ezekiel 38. He does Ezekiel 37 earlier and 39 after. I'm not, once I show him to be a lot, Stop listening to him. <clears throat> so the question is verses 14, 16, and I believe 17. <clears throat> Therefore, son of man, prophesy and tell God, thus says Yahweh, in that day when my people, Israel, dwell securely, shall you not know it? All right, let's look up 14, and then I believe the other verse is 16. 
It says, you shall come from your places of the uttermost part of the north. You and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great company and a mighty army. 16. And you shall come up against my people, Israel, as a cloud to cover the land. And it shall happen in the latter days that I will bring you against my land, that the nations may know me when I shall be sanctified in you before your eyes. 17. Thus saith Yah Yahweh, are you he of whom I spoke in all time by my servants, the prophets of Israel, who prophesied in those days for many years that I would bring you against them? My people. All right, let's go into it. Let's do the research, right? 14, if you look into it and you go into the Hebrew, <clears throat> I'm in Ezekiel 38 and 14. Let's go into the Hebrew. Give it a second. It's a little slow. So you heard him, right? And he said that the word does not say I'm me, right? It just says I'm. Let's see. Beshevet, right? The word Beshevet comes from the word Lashev, to sit. That's sitting still. Ah, me. Yisrael. My people are uh, me. Those of you who can't read Hebrew, you can see in the English, ah, uh, me, my people. The word ah uh, means people or nation. Ah, uh, me means my people or my nation. Let's go into it. Five, nine, seven, one. And so what he did and this is the problem with using Strong's if you don't know Hebrew. The Hebrew Strong's is just going to give you the root of the word, not the conjugation, not a preset, prefix, not a suffix, um, not a preposition that's attached to the word. It's just going to give you the root of the word, am, um, that means folk or people, am. Um. But you will see that everywhere where this word is, you would see me, ame, ya. Ami, peoples, am, ha'am, right? Le'am, ami, ama, ha'am. And so this is the problem. This is the problem. On this side, it gives you everywhere where this word is being used in all forms, all as conjugations, with a prefix, a suffix, or adverb. What he looked up, was just the root of the word. Okay, let's go back. It says, Beyom Hahu, Beshevet Ami, Yisrael, Labatuak, right? Lebetuak or Labatuak is Bitakon, Betuak, in safety. Te da'a, you will know it. All right, let's look up <coughs> verse. 15 and 16. 16. Here it is again. Ve'alita. Allah comes from the word Allah to come up, to rise. And you will come up al against Ami. Ami, Yisrael. My people, Yisrael. Be'achurit hayomim. In the latter days. All right? <clears throat> yes. My people in my land. Where is his people? In his land. Where are we? Even if we flee into the mountains of Judea, if we are in the wilderness of the borders of the people, we are still where? In the land. And that's where Yah told us to return. In the borders of his land. Okay? So we can see now that he's lying. Now, for those of y'all that want to get some clarity, because he's giving you chocolate and vanilla, and he told you that you can only decide between chocolate 
and vanilla. Therefore, don't decide to listen to act like there's another flavor in the restaurant because he doesn't understand prophecy or time. If you want to get understanding, once again, I'm going to put it in the description box. I just put the video out here. I recorded it two weeks ago. I mean, a week and a half ago, two Shabbats ago. That's why I believe I have an informant. I will shape the heavens and the earth, and I'm prophesizing the very thing that he's prophesizing wrongly about. And I'm giving you details. This is world war events, and they got to make sense. Now, what he's doing is backtracking based upon my run, part one, two, and three, come out of her, my people. Part four and five, come out of her, my people. The unwalled city, the new Jerusalem, and the wilderness. The Mika Code that goes into more explanation, and I repeat some of that about the Mika Code in that very prophecy. And the coming of the Son of Man, showing that there's two walls. Two wars. He's repeating and he's taking nibbits and golden nuggets from me while twisting the word so that you never come to the understanding of the truth. With that, at the same time, I reveal their lies. As you can see, I've gone against them. I reveal their lies in a place prepared for you. No rapture, no wings, because he also taught that we were just supposed to sit still. And when the bomb hits Babylon, America, now he want to act like. There's no bomb hitting Babylon, America. When the bomb hits Babylon and the four horsemen come, they're going to poof up in the cloud and grow wings. Him and Jediah is still teaching that. And I showed the prophecies, what Yah says about people that preach and teach exactly what they're preaching. That what a watchman is supposed to say. You can go into part three, a place prepared for you. Where I read Jeremiah's prophecy distinctly calling them out on their false prophecies that any watchman of Israel is supposed to say, let's return to Zion. I'm going to say again, Israel, he said, come out of her, my people, that you partake not in her plagues and her destruction. There is wrath coming upon Babylon, and that's what the prophecies point to. There are two wars that the Bible talks about in the last days. And Gog and Magog is part of both of them. And that first war is against the land of Grecia. The king of the north against the king of the south. That war is against Russia as the head and other nations against Babylon, America, and all that have joined her through NATO. Russia would never bomb Israel. It would never bomb the land of Israel. Russia is going to destroy America. Israel did not put sanctions on Russia for the last 50 years. Syria, none of those countries put sanctions on Russia for the last 50 years. Babylon, America did. Babylon, America, through NATO and the UN and the League of Nations did. And that's who Russia is going to destroy. Until then, Israel, I'll be back soon. We are entering into the feast days. So it's going to be a while. I might come in as I got time. But we out here in nature. <clears throat> we can't be behind this YouTube all the time. So I can't get all the messages out, but there's enough for you to feast off of and get the testimony of Yahushua and get the true word of prophecy, which is the testimony of Yahushua. And anything else is a false prophet. The Boar Watchman and Yahoo Watchman. This is the third judgment that I put against you. This is the third time you've attempted to falsify direct prophecy against coming through my mouth and I've already called out your judgment and you're going to get it. I said it. Y'all said it. And it shall be. All of you that continue to follow the majority. 27,000 views. 
in a few days against my 1,000 views in two weeks or in a few days. Keep listening, Israel. That's right. Keep listening, Israel, because it is only going to be a ribbon that will hear the truth. Amen.